It's Wednesday, which can mean only one thing. It's time for the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. So let's dive straight in with our first question, which is from Eric C, who asks, should you deflate your tires a bit or all the way before flying with your bike? Is there a difference between tubed and tubeless tires? Um, yes, you should deflate your tires before flying on an aeroplane. Most airlines will actually stipulate that as well. I find that it's best to run them at about half of their normal operating pressure. So about 30 to 40 psi if using tubeless tires, for example. If you are using tubeless tires, what you need to be mindful of is that you don't deflate them all the way because then you run the risk of your tubeless sealant escaping and going all over your bike and leaving a right old mess. So simple answer, deflate them to about half their normal pressure and you should be fine. On to our next question is from Andy Thompson who asks, how do you know when to replace disc rotors? Also, should I be worried about getting degreaser on the brakes? He says, there's a clip at the end where he can see a little bit of aerosol going past the cassette and onto the rotor, which he thought was a big no-no. So first up, in answer to your first question is, the minimum rotor thickness is often stamped onto the brake rotors themselves. So for a Shimano rotor, for example, that's about 1.5 millimeters. And in terms of measuring that, the easiest way to do that is using a vernier caliper. Now, if you don't have any of these, you could just head down to your local bike shop and they'll be able to do that for you nice and easily. And the other part of your question, in terms of when you're cleaning your bike, getting an aerosol or degreaser onto the rotors, for example, yeah, you do want to try and avoid that, but it's not the end of the world. So if you're washing your bike, wash it all off with water. And if you're a bit concerned still, then you can just clean the parts with a brake cleaner and that should sort you out and you have no problems with your brakes. Our next question in is from Raymond Dominic Ramila, who asks, Hi guys, what are the drawbacks of using inner tubes with Schrader valves compared to a tube with a Presta valve? Plan to put some tubeless sealant into my inner tubes and having a hard time finding a tube with a removable Presta valve core in this area. But he can find some 700C tubes with Schrader valves. What are my, in thought what are my thoughts on this? Well, first up, almost all road wheels will only fit a Presta valve, so you won't. You might not even be able to fit a Schrader valved inner tube into your wheel, so that will probably be your first problem. But in terms of finding an inner tube with a removable valve core, most of the time this is quite easy to find. So it might just be that you're looking at a certain brand of inner tubes that don't have that as a feature. So my advice, look online, find maybe some slightly more expensive inner tubes, and chances are they'll have removable valve cores, and then you can put your sealant in there and use those in your normal road wheels. Simple. On to our next question, which is from Kevin Tallou, he says, hey guys, loving the videos. He has a nerdy question. Given all things equal, would a 42 tooth chain ring and a 42 tooth largest rear sprocket be harder to turn than a 34 tooth and a 34 tooth largest rear cog? So he says he knows they're a one-to-one -one ratio and equally the same ratios. But he's wondering if, it's, if the effect of the larger sprockets and chain ring affects the power needed to turn the pedals. Thanks very much. Well, yeah, it is a bit of a nerdy question, but the simple answer is no. They're going to be the same final drive ratio, so you've got the same one-to-one -one ratio in both of those scenarios. The difference being that there might be a very, very slight difference in efficiency. So generally, using a larger sprocket and a larger chain ring will result in a slightly more efficient system. But that said, it's gonna be in the realms of probably less than a watt or two. So absolutely no difference to what you're gonna be able to tell when you're out cycling on the road. So the simple answer is, nope, it won't make any difference at all. But the in-depth technical answer is, yes, there's a minor efficiency saving to be had by using the larger chain ring. Our next question in is from Rick Snyder who asks, last week I rode a Sentry and suffered a bonk of epic proportions. The next day, when he looked in the mirror, he seemed noticeably thinner. He was carrying some winter weight prior to the bonk. Is this possible, or is it just his imagination running away with him? Um, yeah, I'm not sure you can lose loads of weight in one ride. Most probably, it's that you're just incredibly dehydrated from being under fueled as well. So your body's just completely drained of all its fluids and all of your energy reserves that you've got. So over time, like a day or so, as you topple that back up, you'll probably start to not only weigh the same, but feel and look how you imagined you look the day before that epic bonk. 
Um, obviously, the easiest way to lose weight when cycling is just for regular rides and fueling correctly when you're out on the bike to try and avoid bonking. So, unfortunately, I think it's mostly just a figment of your imagination that you've lost weight overnight that dramatically. So, next question is from Andy Lurek, who asks, I bought an extra set of wheels for my gravel bike. When I installed them, I found that I had to adjust the front disc brake because it was rubbing. Is this a common problem or can I adjust, or can some basic adjustments be made to the disc on the new wheel to avoid this problem? Unfortunately, it is a common problem when you buy a new set of wheels for your bike, especially if you're gonna chop and change between them, you may well find that the discs just rub ever so slightly. Now, all of them are gonna be almost in the same place, so you shouldn't have any issues in terms of the main alignment. It's not like your wheel isn't gonna turn around, but you will get that slight rubbing. Um, unless you've got wheels that are exactly the same brand, sort of the hub spacing is the same, and also that you've got the same disc rotors, you are unfortunately gonna have that bit of rubbing. In terms of spacing the disc out, like you asked, yeah, that is possible if you're using a six bolt rotor fitment. Otherwise, if you're using a center lock fitment, for example, you're not gonna be able to adjust that. So on a six bolt rotor fixing, you do have the option of trying to space the rotor out very slightly using some incredibly thin washers, but it's quite a tricky process and it's not the ideal thing to do. So simple answer, you're gonna to have to live with a little bit of brake rubbing unless you've got six bolt rotors and then you can try and space them out and equal your different wheel sizes. Next question in, which is from Jose Manuel Aro. It says he went to a bike shop and the mechanic welded someone's bike and some sparks went onto his carbon frame. Will it be okay? Thanks and safe ride, he says. Um, Yes, your bike will be safe. There's no risk of it being damaged to the point of, of a failure when you're out riding. But in terms of the sparks going all over it, basically those sparks are tiny glowing fragments of metal. So effectively, as they fly onto the paintwork of your bike, they're gonna slightly burn into the metal and are gonna damage the paintwork. Well, they'll burn into the paintwork very slightly because after all, it is effectively a glowing piece of metal. So what you need to be mindful of is just check your frame over, make sure there's no little sparks or little pieces of metal embedded into the paintwork, because if there are, I'd probably take it back to the bike shop and ask them to try and sort it out. Right, our final question this week is from Petrek Ski, who says, hi guys, Ollie has said multiple times that the best upgrade you can make for your bike are cheap latex inner tubes. What about the thermoplastic tubes? This is like a certain orange brand, for example. Are those types of inner tubes any good? They're much lighter, but what about their other claims like improved rolling resistance, for example? So yeah, TPU or thermoplastic inner tubes do represent sort of the latest technology in inner tubes. Um, and in terms of their advantages over a butyl inner tube, they're very much comparable to latex inner tubes. So the difference between a thermoplastic inner tube and a latex inner tube is quite minimal. Out on the road, I don't think you'd be able to necessarily tell the difference between it. However, that is a question that I've asked myself the other week. So coming out on the GCN Tech channel in the coming weeks is gonna be an in-depth look into the difference between butyl, latex, and TPU, so thermoplastic inner tubes. So you have to keep your eyes peeled for an in-depth dive and a look into that to see if there are any differences between them. That is unfortunately it for this week's GCN Tech Clinic. Please do keep your questions coming in using the hashtag AskGCNTech. We'll try and do our very best to get to all of them. But for now, guess I'll see you next week. Bye.